Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation or a system. I guess we could call this a functional equation. Anyways, we have f of g of x plus x equals x. We're also given that g of 3 is equal to 5 and we're supposed to evaluate f of 8. I'll be presenting two methods and the first method may not always work. So just be cautious, but it did work in this case. All right, let's get started. So first method, since I'm given something like this, f of g of x plus x equals x, so f of something is equal to x, I'm just going to assume that f is a linear function. So what does that mean? If f is linear, because f looks linear, doesn't it? Like f of something equals x tells me that f is probably linear. I'm going to try to find f of x and g of x at the same time. But I'm, I don't have a lot of information. I only have two pieces of information, but this should be good enough, okay? To find out what the answer is at least. Okay, great, so let's go ahead and write f of x as a linear function. So how about f of x equals ax plus b, right? But here's the thing, what about g of x? If f of x is linear, and then if g of x is like, let's say quadratic, when you plug in something quadratic, replace x with x squared, for example, then the right-hand side will also be quadratic. So in other words, the linearity of f is actually going to carry over whatever the degree of the polynomial is. Of course, I'm assuming at this point that we're plugging in a polynomial. Then it's going to be on the same thing on the right-hand side because linear is not going to change it, right? So g of x also needs to be linear. So why don't we do this? Let's also write g of x as c of cx plus d, okay? Now, a, b, c, d can be different numbers, obviously, in this case. Now, let's go ahead and plug these into our equations and see what we get from here and try to solve for a, b, c, d. But again, we have a limited number of equations, so we have to be very careful. Okay, so what, what does it mean for f of x to be a x plus b? It's going to take an input as x, multiply it by a, and then add b. a and b are constants, or real numbers in this case, and then that's going to be the output, right? And in this case, our output is x, so we can use the equality of two polynomials. Anyways, to keep a long story short, let's go ahead and evaluate f of g of x plus x, using the definition for f. a times the input plus b is the output, right? a times the input plus b, that's the rule. But we do know g of x can be written as cx plus t. Now let's go ahead and replace, since we do know that g of x is equal to or can be written as cx plus t, let's go ahead and write it as cx plus d. And then another x will come in. Okay, and then now we're going to do the following. Distribute and simplify, but here we have c plus 1x. So we have a times c plus 1x plus d and then plus b. And of course, this is f of g of x plus x, and we do know that it's actually equal to x, so this is equal to x. Make sense? Okay, that's the first equation. Now let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. a times c plus 1 times x plus ad plus b is equal to x. Now this is supposed to be true for all values of x in the domain. Therefore, we can safely say that the coefficient of x is equal to 1, and the constant term is equal to 0. Awesome. So let's go ahead and write these down. a times c plus 1 is equal to 1, and ad plus b is equal to 0. We've got two equations so far, and we have four variables, so we do need two more equations. Let's go ahead and take a look at the given, another given. g of 3 is equal to 5. What is that? Well, g of 3 can be found by replacing x with 3 here. So since g of x is cx plus d, let's go ahead and write uh, g of x as cx plus d, and g of 3 is just given as what? 5, okay? So let's go ahead and evaluate g of 3. g of 3 is going to be 3c plus d. So 3c plus d is equal to 5. That gave us three equations, but we have four variables. Let's see if we can actually solve these equations. So what are we going to do? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, isolate a from the first equation. 
So A can be written as 1 over C plus 1. And then I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of something. For example, from the third equation, I can go ahead and isolate D. And D can be written actually in terms of C, which is nice, 5 minus 3C. And then using these two things, look at the second equation. B can be written as negative AD. And since A and D are both in terms of C, we can go ahead and replace uh, A and D with those. So B is going to be negative 1 over C plus 1 multiplied by D, which is 5 minus 3C. Let's go ahead and uh, act uh, on this with the negative sign. So B can be written as 3C minus 5. So I'm negating the second term divided by C plus 1. Great. This is awesome because we were able to write everything in terms of C. And of course, C is equal to C, right? So here's what we're going to do. Our goal is to solve for what? What are we trying to find, right? Well, our goal is to evaluate. Our goal is to evaluate f of 8. So let's go ahead and do it. What is f of 8? That's our goal, right? But what is f of x written as? It was written as ax plus b. So ax plus b. And then let's go ahead and replace a with what it is. A can be written as 1 over C plus 1, so times X. This is going to be F of X, by the way, plus B, which is 3C minus 5 divided by C plus 1. Awesome, right? So we were able to find F of X actually as a linear function in the form MX plus B, but the problem is we don't know what the M and B are because they depend on C. But guess what? That's not going to matter. So let's go ahead and find out. I'm going to go ahead and replace x with 8 to find f of 8. And that's going to give me f of 8 equals 8 over c plus 1 plus 3c minus 5 over c plus 1. Notice that we have a common denominator. That's awesome. So add the numerators. And notice that when you add the numerators, you get 3c plus 3. And that can be factored out as 3 times c plus 1. And notice that if c does not equal negative 1, hopefully it isn't, it can be canceled out. When the c plus 1 cancels out, we end up with f of 8 equals 3, which is what we were looking for, right? Okay, that brings us to the end of the first method. And apologize because the first method was a little long, but I think it's important in terms of, uh, you know, looking at functional equations, especially when you can uh, guess that they're linear. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and rewrite the problem and go with the second method, okay? So we have f of g of x plus, what was the other piece? I forgot. f of g of x plus x is equal to x. So this is going to be x. And then we're supposed to find f of 8, but we also know that g of something, what is that? <laughs> we do know that g of 3 is equal to 5. Great. So g of 3 is equal to 5, and we're supposed to find, oops, not f of 8. We don't know what it is. We're supposed to find f of 8. Okay? Great. How do you do it? Well, think about it. Like, think simple. Since we were given g of 3, why not replace x with 3 everywhere? Let's do it. That gives us f of g of 3 plus 3 equals 3. We also know that g of 3 is equal to 5. And please don't hate me for this. That gives us f of 8 equals 3, which is what we were looking for. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.